<laughs> well, that's that's all I wanted to get into because I, I I'm sure this is going to be a long and interesting discussion about uh, new media and all that kind of stuff. So, so uh, what's tonight about, Lauren? I was about to set the timer. For ourselves. <laughs> you caught her at the worst I'm moment. So, I'm very sorry. <laughs> she was unprepared. We yeah. Now I'm starting the timer. Okay. Tonight we are talking about digital media landscape and the implications of a certain event uh, in the future of our entire Regional respective or? industries. Both, really. This is indicative of a lot of things that are going on nationally, I think. Okay. Would you like to start the discussion? No, not really. Well, I don't know how to. Well, I think this this whole thing started uh, uh, with what we talked about last week uh, with the, uh, the Weekender incident. But I think that we decided that we wanted to talk about something about how it's, as Lauren said, indicative of, of things that have changed. Sure. Well, I, I think, I think that, uh, you know, the one thing that good that come, could come out of that, uh, uh, really stupid and awful incident is the fact that, uh, it's kind of brought up the discussion of, you know, what is appropriate and what's not appropriate. Uh, you know, where do journalists, journalistic ethics come in, in, uh, you know, now 2016, you know, like where, um, uh, what should and shouldn't be printed and, and, and uh, you know, where, when, when the editor has to step in and, you know, when creativity can take over and things like that. And it's an interesting question because you know, uh, the medium is the message. Marshall McLuhan always said the medium is the message. And if you're talking about a publication that isn't necessarily uh, considered to be hard hitting news, it's not news, it's, new, it's entertainment news. Sure. Is that really journalism? At what point does it become tabloid and what kind of journalistic ethics are we expecting from something that's towing the line in between? But then that falls into every other kind of medium that we have. We already know as a society not to trust anything we read on the internet. Um, Jimmy doesn't. Well, I well, just sent you a link about you. If it pops up at hour. three or more sites, then it's legit. <laughs> so, so the question is, is how can we trust any, any news that we have? And then as an up and coming <clears throat> journalist who might be in school right now, what, what are the questions you should be asking yourselves in terms of your ethics? And where do you go when you actually enter uh, your, your field, when you enter the career, what do you, what can we expect to deliver to you as a, audience i always found it gross to add the word ethics with media because <laughs> um, <clears throat> it, it's, it's nonsensical it's almost a paradox in the sense of what is media it's a it's a modern phenomenon so even digital media in the aspect of history all media is new it's only 100 yeah. years old at a systematic level to I, be fair it, since the written word was was invented and the medium was books absolutely it was held to a standard where only an elite few were even given the the the, All media is the elite. Access to it's it. usually the messaging of the elite. Mm. If, you, if if it's a real legitimate source of media at a systematic level, like, and that's why I'm saying the birth of systematic media was only a hundred years old. World War One was really the inception of how to control thoughts. The whole idea of media, to me, is always just a grab for power. And if you're going to be ethical about it, you would have to not have a front page headline. You would have to have a front page defining your owners. Hmm. and their interests because they're only serving the interest of what owns that media new york times uh civitas media owns times leader what is their interest um and th their their news will be slanted towards their interest always and inevitably that is the inception of modern media the first being the british ministry of information was the first media modern media to persuade elites to get into a war america um that's how I always saw media in, 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 in respect advertising. It's usually media is a modern inception of protecting people's interests against democracy. Oh. That's what media is usually serving. Um, uh, <laughs> to, well, to have media means to mediate. You're taking a ball of information, forming it into yeah. some sort of purpose, and then delivering it to a specific audience. And that is the that's the diagram that we're looking at. That's the school version, but we know in reality, most media is to serve an interest, and and I, there is no objective news that I'm I'm aware of. Like if you listed the most trusted publications in media um, in the United States in 2014, was the most trusted forms of communication were the Economist. BBC, why? Because they're they're out, not on our soil, and we're we're not sure what they're serving. New York Times uh, is a legitimate media for someone who's a liberal, but what's legitimate for conservatives? So there's not 
like a, a headquarters for objective media. There's no such thing as no. an objective media. No. There, and the audience that is going to watch it is going to gravitate towards whatever is not going to aggravate their confirmation bias. Absolutely. It's it's impossible to say that I'm like I'm a conservative. I'm going to watch liberal media. It wouldn't work. I wouldn't accept the information the same way as if I was slanting already towards that. That that inclination, a confirmation bias, is simply uh, you don't seek out thoughts that don't align with your own. You your brain just discounts them immediately. Lenses, it's, they're called in, in psychology. Right. You you it have to pass a lens. So it doesn't matter if it's a fact. Facts usually never win elections. They won't win an advertising campaign. You have media has to live off of the irrational behavior of people, and that's it's it's bizarre because it's the opposite of what. <laughs> economics would be you're you're relying on consumers to be make rational informed decisions to keep an economy going right but but to be a master of media you know how crazy people are and you feed off of those uh irrationalities and boom goes the dynamite and that makes success (laughs) in media so and so in terms of you know and i know this is a this is a probably a national if not a global issue um Using the regional, it was. I always found it interesting when you compared like the 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 spending of the U.S. government and broke it down to a household just to simplify it. So using what happened regionally, there, I mean, is that is that systemic of of a greater? And I'm and I'm talking about the the weekender article. I don't think I, I don't think that these article writers usually get called out to such a degree. No, it, it, you this see this. I mean, is this form. just a unique? We're in the swamp. We're talking about the swamp of media. I mean, this is an <laughs> influence the hearts and minds of people who are making policies or buying, uh, you know, hedge funds. We're talking about people who are serving the needs of strip clubs, uh, places to get, you know, uh, an, a legal guest version of a hand job. Uh, <laughs> this is this is the cash flow of the weekender. So the man did a great job. If you need to train, he's writing to the audience that needs to buy these services. So nothing's really out of line. Um, it's just that legitimate people paid attention to what the weekender was doing. Oh, this is gross. Um, just, just, just to point out, I don't think that there is a legal version of a hand job in the state of Pennsylvania. Sure, there is. Uh, have you ever dated? <laughs> what are you talking about? I, none of my girlfriends were committing crimes against me. Jeez. <laughs> oh, Excuse me, what you're doing is illegal. I just wanted to buy you dinner. I didn't know you were a criminal. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Dessert would have been fine. I, I didn't know what you wanted to assault me with a hand job. Assault him. Hand jobs are beautiful. They're legal. You can't pay for them. I misspoke. I meant you cannot pay are you, legally. Are you trying okay. to say that okay. those mm-hmm. massage parlors aren't really massage parlors? Is that really what I you're saying? Breathe. I can't Ask Lee. I don't know. Well, for for those, what episode number is this? 46. 46. This is the hardest we've laughed in forty six episodes. Oh. <laughs> that one moment. <laughs> There, right, continue. There, there's a few people that probably uh, maybe still don't know about this whole thing or, or aren't aware of what we're referencing. So uh, essentially, long story short, uh, a longtime columnist for The Weekender, Justin Adam Brown, who uh, basically w- was writing kind of uh, crazy frat boy stories and things like that. And, you know, uh, he, he basically wrote a story that went over the line that went too far for people around here. Uh, where he insulted veterans by essentially saying that he went out and pretended to be a veteran to get free drinks and that he thought that was okay because he sees women do it all the time at the bar, uh, flaunting themselves and everything else to get free drinks. So why can't he stoop to these uh, levels or whatever? And so then uh, people around here freaked out, said, you know, this guy's got to go. Uh, so the weekender did let him go. But he was already let go. Yeah, he, he was already leaving anyway. I mean, he only had a couple more columns to go before he was done. Um, the editor admitted that she should have caught it, that she should have, you know, exercised some sort of uh, editorial judgment and uh canned it before it hit print. It did not. Um, so then that kind of started this whole discussion, which eventually led into uh, he was on uh, Corbett the other day. Well, actually, uh, Steve, he Steve was Corbett on, on radio. It he was, was actually on WBRE uh, 
like two days earlier. Yes. Claiming that this incident happened. Yes. And then he went on Corbett and claimed that the incident never happened. Right. And, and that, that he, em, he embellished the idea of a guy that he said was, said he was 45 and fought in Vietnam 